Terry R. Eicher is a flat earther who is not a fan of us debunkers, and he has come out and done what not many flat earthers have done. He's explaining how solar eclipses work on a flat earth. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Now, before we begin today, a huge thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Curiosity Stream. The best place to find and watch documentaries about science, history, technology, nature, travel and so much more. Curiosity Stream has exclusive award-winning films and shows which you can't watch anywhere else. Plus the deepest collection of the best documentaries from around the world. Deeper than any other streaming service out there. You could think of it as the Hulu for history buffs or the Disney Plus for the scientist in all of us. Curiosity Stream adds new shows every week and is one of the best deals in streaming. Now I am a huge David Attenborough fan and his exclusive Curiosity Stream original Light on Earth is simply awesome. In this he discusses the real natural wonder of bioluminescence and how it all works. It is a stunning program. Go to curiositystream.com slash Simon or scan the QR code for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and non-fiction series. And for all Simon Dan fans use the code Simon Dan to get 25% off. Which is great because it's already one of the most affordable and best deals in streaming. So click the link below or go to curiositystream.com slash simandan to save 25% now. Right, back to today's video, which as I said earlier is Flat Earther Terry R. Eicher trying to show us how solar eclipses work on a flat Earth. This should be special. Here we go. Good afternoon, everyone. I've uh, been getting a lot of questions lately about how an eclipse works on the geocentric flat Earth model. And it can be complicated unless you understand how close the sun and moon are and how the sun and moon rotate around the geocentric flat Earth model. Don't worry, because the flat earthers don't understand how the sun and moon rotate around their own model either. Never an explanation as to what powers them or the physics behind it. They just do. Okay, now NASA and science will tell you it is when the moon passes in between the Earth and the sun. Now that is true, but it's just not the way that they tell you that it is. According to you, a flat earther. Meanwhile, the rest of the world understands quite easily how it works. And the evidence for it can even be seen from the International Space Station. And one of the first things that they tell you is that the sun is 400 times the size of the moon which by coincidence makes the sun and the moon appear to be the same size in the sky at the same time. Not always, and it's not exact. Now I've shown this before, but look at the relative sizes between the sun and the moon right now. As you can see, at the moment they're quite similar sizes. But look at when the sun is at its largest and the moon at its smallest. This is when you get annular solar eclipses. Conversely, this is when the moon is at its biggest and the sun its smallest. So you see, it's not exact. So first of all, let me take your attention to the sun and moon in the sky when there is no eclipse going on. Just your normal everyday sky. Now take a look here. Okay, here's the sun on a cloudy day and you can see the size of it really good because the clouds are blocking the brightness of the sun so it doesn't look so big and bright. Now let's take a look at the moon on a cloudy night. You see the similarity there? Yeah, and I don't think anyone is disputing this. They both look identical in size. Let's go back and look at the sun again. And like I said, you normally can't see the actual size of the sun because it's so bright. But like I said here, the clouds are blocking that brightness so you can see the size of it. Check it out. Once again, the moon. Now, to the, to the human eye, they both appear to be the same size, right? Your natural common instinct tells you that they are both the same size. Take a look again. Well, no, the human eye will not be able to detect the slight variations in size between the sun and the moon in our sky. They will look, for all intents and purposes, the same size. But crucially, they are not always. Okay, now let's look at it from a different sky. 
okay? Now here's with a, a cell phone camera. Now we're gonna zoom in on the moon. Okay, now that's as far as this cell phone will zoom in, okay? Now let's go back over here and zoom in on the sun. Okay. Now, as you see, with the same zoom on the sun and the moon, they both appear to be the same size. Not the most accurate of measurements, but we get your point. Let's all remember though, as I stated earlier, that they are hardly ever the exact same size in our sky. In the same sky at the same time. Okay, now let's flip to the scripture of Enoch. Now let's flip over here to chapter 72, verse 37. As he rises, so he sets and decreases not, and rests not, but runs day and night, and his light is sevenfold brighter than that of the moon. But as regards size, they are both equal. Well, if we're going by magnitude alone, then the sun is almost 400,000 fold the brightness of the moon, not seven times more, but carry on. Now let's flip over here to chapter 78. Okay, these are the two great luminaries. Their circumference is like the circumference of the heaven and the size of the circumference of both is alike. Great, so the people that wrote the Bible, more specifically the Book of Enoch, could see the sun and the moon. That is all this proves. Hmm, imagine that. So when you look up into the sky and your common sense and your instincts tell you that they both are the same size, it's because they are. But still remembering that they aren't really. Okay, now that you understand that, let's use the 2017 uh, total eclipse to uh, demonstrate to you how this takes place on the geocentric flat earth okay remembering that the sun and moon are the same size we're going to use this side light on this flashlight which happens to be the same size as this penny well isn't that a coinky dink so the penny is going to represent our moon and the flashlight is going to represent our sun so let's move our sun source in local as it would be on a flat earth now let's see how the eclipse works with the moon passing right underneath the sun and there you have your corona yes that's all very good and anyone can do that but here is where your world comes crashing down now because of our orbit around the sun and the moon's orbit around us they are often different sizes in the sky as i've been alluding to for the majority of this video now this means you get total solar eclipses annual eclipses partial eclipses the lot now the problem with your theory is that that gives you only one type of eclipse in your model you can never get an annular eclipse because yes, whilst the sun and moon do rotate above your flat earth, they don't move closer or further away from you, do they? So in your explanation, they are always exactly the same size, but in reality, we don't see that. So Terry, here is the question, because I know you watch my channel. How and why do you get an annular solar eclipse in your flat earth model? Simple as that. Shouldn't be too difficult, should it? I'll await your response. Right, well, there we go. Another fascinating look into the world of the Flat Earther. But for now, we are all done and dusted for another Flat Earth Friday. Thank you so much for watching. As always, it is truly appreciated. And as always, if you enjoyed it today, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And if you really, really enjoyed it, then hitting that like button too would also be very much appreciated. Just enough time to once again thank CuriosityStream for sponsoring today's video. Remember, click the link in the description or go to curiositystream.com slash Simandan to get 25% off now. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great weekend and I'll see you on Tuesday for the return of Mr. Astrotheology, Santos Bonucci himself. See you then. <laughs>